for listening to our music tonight. Can I talk to you guys for 10 minutes? Is that okay? Right. Do you want to talk for 10 minutes? And do I need to I'm going to talk to you anyway. I'll sit down a bit closer though. Okay guys, I'm going to ask you um, if you could all listen in to me just for 10 minutes. If that's okay. I want to talk to you a bit about myself. A bit about what I believe. So, uh, can, you, can you hear me okay? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I want to tell you something that happened to me when I was younger. Can you, can you see it? Guys, can I ask you all to tune in just for 10 minutes? Is that okay? Sorry for the conversation, but uh, if you could tune in for 10 minutes, I'd really appreciate that. That'd be very good, Okay, I want to tell you something about me. Some of you probably noticed that tonight there was one extremely good looking member of Royal Foundlings on the stage, Mr. Andrew Gunning. It's true. We, we went to primary schools and Andrew got so much attention, it's unreal because he's very pretty, isn't he Amy? He's, he's, a, he's a pretty boy. And uh, I don't get any of that attention of little school kids saying, I'm, I'm not that upset about that, but it, it reminds me of something that happened to me when I was younger. Now, I've never really been that good looking. Uh, you can see I haven't. It's true. I've been life, so it's okay. But before I met my wife, I was really in, kind of shy and embarrassed about asking girls out on dates or anything like that. I was too scared to talk, they didn't like all that stuff. But um, I had a friend and he, um, he said to me that he had a foolproof plan to help me um, with a date. I said, what's that? And he said, I've got you a blind date. And I thought to myself, this isn't a good thing that he has me a blind date. But he said, Dave, don't worry. It's, I've set you up with my cousin and her name's Doris. And I thought, I've never heard anyone called Doris before. And I'm assuming, being this guy's cousin, he was worse looking than me. I thought she would be a mutant with purple hair or something. And a green face, something like that. But he assured me she was really, really pretty and really worthwhile going on a date with. And he said, it's all arranged for Saturday night. You just need to go to your house at 7 o'clock and pick her up. He said, but I've got this little trick if, if I get set up on a blind date. If you go on the blind date and you see my cousin and you don't really want to go on the date just go <coughs> and pretend you have an asthma attack I thought that's a bit clever <laughs> has anyone tried that before? No. I thought that's really good so I had a, I got a bit of confidence and I went and knocked in Doris's door and she opened the door and she was stunning she was beautiful. like just as the guy said stunning I thought yes brilliant and just as we were about to leave, she went, <laughs> and, and uh, <laughs> quite upset, really. You know? um, and uh, there was no date that night for them. <laughs> you know, some of us, the hardest thing in life is rejection, sometimes. Would you agree with me? I don't know if you, well in fact I do know, I can pretty much guarantee that at some point every single one of us in here has felt rejection, am I right? And it, and it hurts doesn't it? It really hurts. That story wasn't true by the way. <laughs> it's just an example. <laughs> but you know what, I feel rejected just thinking about it. You know, um, I know you guys know I was really handsome at school. But, um, <laughs> anyway, rejection hurts you to the core. I have been rejected. I was bullied really, really bad at school. I had to leave school at the end of fifth year because I couldn't go in anymore because I was just getting done in or chucked in showers or with oh. like my uniform on and different bits and pieces, you know. But it's okay because I had Jesus and I've still got him. And so I don't have a problem with it. But rejection is, is hard. Things like that happening to you, it's hard to take. Let me ask you something. If someone came to you with the greatest present ever and you chucked it back in their face, how do you think that would make someone feel? 
pretty, pretty rejected, pretty much, eh? You know what? Some of us do that every day. Because someone's gave us an extremely special gift. And some of us just don't accept it. We don't accept the gift. Some of us may do that intentionally. And some of us may do that unintentionally. We might not mean it. Some of us actually are to believe in God. Some of us believe that there is a God, there is a higher power. There is a Jesus. But they've not accepted Jesus. They've not given him their soul. They've not given him their life. They've not made a choice. A choice to follow Jesus. What I want to present to you guys tonight is it a choice that you take. I want you guys to make a decision tonight. You can make it whatever way you want, but I want you to make a choice. I go into schools and so many people say, I'm just not sure. I'm just, you know, I'm kind of a believer a wee bit, but I'm, I'm, you know, they're a bit wavery on it. Guys, if Jesus is right, and I'm telling you that he is, and if he created the heavens and the earth, and if he died for you, and you don't make a decision to go for him, then you're making an opposite decision, brother. You mean it or not? Some of us walk around life and it's it's really easy to look okay on the outside. Anything can look good on the outside. I know some of us look like we've got it all together. Does anyone, does anyone like Pepsi? Yeah, Pepsi is my favourite drink. I'll tell you I'll tell you guys that a wee joke. You can play with Pepsi. Don't tell anyone out of the room, but you can play it to someone. See if you get a pair of uh, black boxer shorts and you cut the elastic off and you put it, squeeze it in a, bo- a, a new bottle of Pepsi and put it in the fridge for half an hour. You can't see the boxer shorts and then you give it to someone. And it looks great. It looks like a fantastic fine bottle of Pepsi. And it's only when they pour their glass and have a drink and pour their second glass that they see a bit of boxer shorts and the Pepsi. <laughs> it looks like a perfectly normal bottle of Pepsi. But there's something pretty nasty inside, you know. <laughs> Some of us are like that. We look great on the outside. We look like we've got it all together. But inside there's something not right. Inside, we're a bit of a mess. I want to tell you tonight, the only way to feel whole inside, to feel complete inside, is to make the choice tonight to not reject what Jesus has done for you, but to accept what Jesus has done for you. That's what I want you guys to leave here doing tonight. That song by Sangha of India, of, of course most of you know it's from a band called Malachi, but it's so true. Don't let it go without a fight. There's, you know, they don't use the word fight lightly. I know it's not easy. I know right now, as I'm speaking, there are fights going on inside some people because they're feeling something tugging at them and you, and you know you don't really want to give. You don't really want to make a choice, but you're confronted with the fact that you have to. This is a fight tonight. But you, Jesus died on the cross to give us victory over everything. We've already got a victory. He died on the cross for you. And I'm asking you tonight not to reject him. He's given you the greatest gift you're ever going to receive. And I just want to ask you guys tonight not to reject him. I want to ask you, if you're already a Christian, I don't know where everyone's at in this room. If you put even things before Jesus, if you believe in Jesus, that you put things in front of him, put relationships before him, you put music before him, you put other things in his place, in a sense, that's rejecting him as well. So I want some people to make some decisions tonight. I want this to be the night you choose to either give God your life for the first time, or to choose to give God not just a part of your life, but your whole life. To give him more than you've ever given him before. To win the spiritual battle. And be able to say. Because Jesus loved me first. I'm going to love him back. And I'm going to put him first. I'm going to give him everything. My relationships aren't coming first. My job isn't coming first. My music's not coming first. Nothing's coming first before Jesus. That's what I want us to get to tonight. Can we close our eyes guys and pray quickly. Jesus, I want to thank you for this awesome privilege to come here and spend some time with friends 
Our more Lord, spend some time with, with people that have become family, Lord, people that we love. I thank you for that. And I thank you for every single person in this room that's heard your message tonight. Lord, I trust you that you're speaking to people. I trust you that you're ministering to people. Not because of what we've sung or said, Lord, that even in spite of that sometimes, Lord, I know that you're speaking to people here tonight. I'd ask you to continue to touch their lives and I ask you to lead people to you. Tonight, give people the strength, Lord, 